social media has been seen as a tool to advance democracy as well as bring about regime change if one thinks of the Arab Spring, for example. And this is, of course, if it's used properly. But in recent years, the elections, a dark side to social media has emerged. And that dark side not only threatens elections, but democracy as well. And this coincides with the rise of fake news, disinformation, as well as misleading political campaigns. Today, election bodies across the African continent are gathering for a four-day conference looking into the benefits as well as the dangers of social media, especially in relation to elections. To speak more about this conference as well as the risks of social media and elections, I am joined by the IEC Commissioner Mosutu Meapa from Cape Town. A very good morning to you, sir, and thank you so much for your time this morning. Perhaps let's start right here and look at the influence that social media may have had in South Africa's very own last elections. Thank you, Tammy, and good morning to uh, your viewers. Yes, indeed, um, social media uh, has been a great uh, propeller of uh, access to electoral information, but it, it's also been a big challenge in relation to fake news or disinformation uh, being used on that platform. Our own example in South Africa is the, election, uh, the elections in, in 2019, where we saw a, a proliferation of disinformation uh, coming from, uh, for example, pictures of elections uh, in, two th in, in, in previous elections, not relating to 2019 itself, being used as though they were relating to the elections uh, last year. We, we, have you, we have seen people um, say things that were incorrect, in fact, completely um, false, uh, and, and propelling them as though they were, they were truths. And so these are the things that we are going to be looking at. But properly used, one must say that social media has indeed um, helped. It has been a cheap way of communicating, a quick way of communicating, and um, a good way of getting some of the target markets or, you know, we are looking at in the electoral process. Now, there will be more than 170 delegates attending this particular conference, which has been organized by the IEC as well as the UNDP. What do you hope will be the outcomes of this gathering? Well, perhaps it's important to paint the context as follows. Africa in this year will have more than 30 elections, just this year alone. In each one of those, social media is going to be a significant part of the, of the, of the process. And we hope that um, by putting our heads together uh, in the next four days, we will be able to, you know, to share best practices, to look at um, what developments in the space uh, we as electoral management bodies could be taking advantage of. But what are the kind of things that we should do to actually channel um, complaints, information, um, and, you know, uh, genuine information, as it were, uh, quickly and properly through um, our, our users, our stakeholders, and, um, you know, voters themselves in this process. That's really what we hope we will do. How powerful really is social media on the African continent? We will know that Facebook um, has been uh, accused or attributed to being a very key influencer in the outcome of the Brexit vote, also in the 2016 U.S. presidential election, where those who were intimately involved in running the campaign have admitted that it did sway the outcome of the vote. How influential is social media on the African continent? I think, I think it's very, very, very influential. And that's why we are spending time on it. Um, it, is, it is a platform that is, in, you know, uh, it's growing at a phenomenal rate. Um, something that is fairly cheap to access and, and has wide appeal. But, but the danger, of course, is the fact that not only is it limited to a geographic area, people can in, engage with it from across the world. And that is the thing that we, we face as electoral management bodies um, and we need to deal with, as it were. 
Now, if we look at our own situation here in South Africa, we had the Bell Pottinger situation where an entire PR campaign uh, was pitched and, and disseminated regarding white monopoly capital pitching whites against blacks, and, and this specifically towards and geared towards the, the, the elections. What are the possible pitfalls that social media can have for the IEC? It, it is... One of the major pitfalls we face with social media, the, you know, the darker side of social media, is that we, we, we may have disinformation that is intended to, in fact, um, impact the outcome of an election. And if that were to be the case, it would clearly be in violation of um, the Electoral Code of Conduct, which is a law in our country that, you, for example, you may not publish um, inaccurate or falsehoods uh, about a candidate or a party uh, involved in an election. And clearly what we see with social media is that it is used extensively to discredit or publish disinformation um, against candidates and political parties, which is then a violation. It, you know, put together, these violations can cumulatively impact on the credibility of an election. You, you, you know, for example, if someone were to say uh, elections have been postponed in the Western Cape today, old people don't come or, you know, it'll be a day later. When that is a, a falsehood, it may in fact stop people from voting when they were intended to vote. Fake news is clearly a problem. What could be some of the solutions? Uh, we have seen Twitter banning uh, some political adverts as well. Could this be a potential way out, the banning of ads? There are a combination of factors that we, we, we've already tried, but we hope that through this conference a number of them will, will come out. For example, in South Africa we worked with um, um, platforms such as, um, you know, uh, Google, such as um, uh, Facebook, uh, Twitter, um, and, and to say to them, this is what the electoral legislation uh, says or prescribes about um, the use of these things or what information can be propelled. Together with them, we, we then worked on a, a code of conduct that was published and where we could, when falsehoods were published or, or information violating the code of conduct was published, we could easily get back to them and, and, and attend to those matters speedily. We were able to remove some of the things in time or to get um, them to help us uh, resolve whatever challenge that we were facing. And challenge, by challenge, I don't mean us editing um, people or you know, blocking people out, but to the extent that that information was genuine, we addressed it. Where it was falsehoods, that's when they, they needed to, to ensure that it was, it was removed. And we'll leave our discussion at that for this morning. But thank you so much for your time, sir. Uh, that is Musutu Miepa there of the IEC, focusing on the conference that's currently taking place in Cape Town.